Devonair was released. The last commandant of 1916 was released out of Kilmainham Jail. That was 1924, I should say. In 1926, the Commandant General of the IRA, Frank Egan, Devil Era, Sean Damas, Sean Kelly, others came together to form a new party called Fianna Fáil. There was great liking for Fianna Fáil amongst Republican people, and they subscribed to it, gave their best. But in 1926, they registered in National House. In 1932, they stood for the elections. And they won by one seat. So all the jails at that time were full of Republican prisoners. So Fina Fyle decided that he would release all the prisoners out of the jail. And releasing the prisoners out of the jail, they called the snap elections the following year, 1923. They won by 77 seats to coincide with the 77 of the executions of the Civil War. And they got all the finance and help that they wanted of Republican people. Even George Plant was brought back from America in the 20s. And he was a great man to help the Fianna Fáil organisation. There was two banks robbed in Tipperary, and the proceeds of that banks went to Fianna Fáil. And it went along the line, it came to 1935, when the IRA went to see the heads of Fianna Fáil. The head of the IRA at that time was Sean McBride, who was Chief of Staff, Sean Russell, who was Adjutant General, Paddy McGrath, Mrs. Forlong, who was an aunt of Brenda Bean. Another person kind of didn't name for the moment, old Joe Clark of the Battle Mount Street Bridge. Went to see them in 1935. They were told by Aiken to put with their arms for a few years and strike for the freedom of the north of Ireland and he got all the aid and help to be wanted of Fianna Fáil. But much they were tricked by that, the IRA. Because in 1936 Sean McGlynn was a prisoner of war in Harbour Hill prison up here. He was one of them that was released in 1922, rearrested because he had arms and with other men, and he found themselves back in Harbour Hill. Now, he got an awful severe beating and was kicked to death by the Iron Army Red Cups. They turned around and said that he hung himself. They put sheets down, like bits of rope, put around his neck to say that he hung himself. But the autopsy proved that he had been brutally ill-treated at that time. Now, there was no prosecutions allowed into the beating that he got and the murder of him. Other prisoners that was in Harbour Hill at the time Elderly men told me that when they, they were young at the time, but they were elderly when I met with them, and they told me of the cruelty that there was in Harbour Hill against Republican prisoners by Freestyle Army Red Caps. They should not have been allowed as warriors in that place because. These were men, perhaps of the Civil War period, who had carried out desperate atrocities against Republicans soon, below across Bally and in other places. Perhaps some of them was on the executions of the 77 and murders of others. 
is so being a civilian civilian wars in it. But no one quest, no one looking into Shepherd Lane. That had passed. 1937, Peter McCarthy from Dublin here, he fought the Black and Tans. He fought in the Civil War on the Republican side. He got a pretty nervous breakdown in prison. He was released from prison and under the amnesty of 1932. But had a, an awful way of I don't know, river, 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 river. And he was coming along from Blossom Street here in Dublin when a squad car pulled up and Roy Harriot called Brockenbank. They had a chemist there in Thomas Street. Brockenbank. The detective called Brockenbank. Shot him dead. Shot McCarthy dead. It was put down that through him putting his hands through his pocket that he was going for a revolver. The man was unarmed. He was just a kind of a symptom from the Civil War period. Um, no charge against Buckingham. No charge at all whatsoever. Christopher Board in 1939, an IRA man, the IRA was out training. He stayed behind to pick up cartridges and shells. His body was found in Kilbride and it was. They don't know, he didn't shoot himself, but he was found shot dead. They put down that it was the Bright Harriers who had shot him. Who had shot him. 1940 brings me from 1930 into 1940. Baron McCormack, two soldiers of the Irish Republican Army, were over in England, in Birmingham. There was explosives left all at the time. Barnes and McCormack was arrested. Now any dossiers of republicanism at that time were printed by the Evola printing works. It was owned by Oscar Trainer, partly owned by Oscar Trainer of Fina Foyle, a deserter from republicanism. And the dossiers were sent over of those men and of others. The two men were arrested, sentenced to death, and they were hanged in Winston Green Prison in Birmingham in 1940. The Irish government was asked to intervene. They didn't intervene. And I was on bringing back their bodies in 1966, or in around that period, when our bodies were brought back, and we brought them down to, to, uh, to Mullingar, Timstown, or whatever you call it, and there is where the two of them were buried. They didn't die. Tony Darcy, Sean McNeela, Tony Darcy from Hetford in Galway, Sean McNeela from Mayo. Two prisoners of war in Mountjoy Jail, and they would not accept the conditions that was laid down to them, and they went on hunger strike. And after a period of time on hunger strike, they were moved to Brickens Military Hospital, just up the street here, to where the two of them died on hunger. It was said, that said to a dying, Makila shouted, Tony, where are you Tony? I'm dying Tony. Tony Darcy got out of the bed to assist his dying comrade. He got a fall, which a short period after ended his life. The two men, from one in Galway, the other from this. And their bodies was interned in a short period of time. Now, we come along to John Joe Kavanagh. 
1940, blown cork. He came through a hole in the wall, it was put down, that was a tunnel, and he was shot dead. Instead of arresting him, he was shot dead. He was shot dead. No prosecutions was allowed into that whatsoever. No one whatsoever. Leave me still in 1940. But Paddy McGrath and Thomas Hart were at a meeting in Renda here in Dublin, in Nancy McCown's house, when they were attacked and shots was fired at them. Thomas Hart was wounded. Thomas Hart was wounded. And I think that that's two men, one is with elderly looking, if somebody would go out there to avoid them. I think he went to the fire door. Maybe I am rather mistaken. But I hope you hear my voice clearly. 